Let's round off our discussion of dplyr by looking at some data exploration scenarios and looking at some new functions as well. So the first function we're going to look at is the top n function, which of course finds the top n values where we supply the value for n. And this question says find the manufacturer model and highway mileage from the MPG data set for cars with the top 10 highway mileage values. So without using pipes or anything, I'm just saying top n MPG, the name of the table or data frame, 10, the value for n, HWY, the column of interest. So we want the top, the rows for which the highway mileage is in the top 10 of the highway mileage values. Okay, we're not asking the, to order the result by anything or any such thing, right? So what you get back is this, right? So the highway mileage values here are all the values which are in the top 10. Now one thing you do notice is that you've actually got 11 values, okay? That is because there is probably a tie for the 10th value. In fact, if you look at the lowest value, it's 33, there are two 33s, right? So both the 10th and the 11th cars have a highway mileage value of 33. So it doesn't break the tie, it just gives you all of the values, okay? So that's why it gives 11. If you try 15, you will see that you get only 15 different values. If you want to see this in sorted order, of course you can pipe the result of this to a range and arrange by descending order of highway mileage and then you will see that the last value is indeed a tie. Okay, this is not sorted. We can sort it if we like. So this is what you would do. Right, you say MPG, this time I'm using pipe, top and 10 highway. We didn't supply MPG as the first argument because it's coming in through the pipe. So take the result of top 10, send it to a range by descending order of values, right? And then notice that 33, that's where the tie is. So that is why it is giving you both 10 and 11. So the next thing we want to consider is use the MPG data set, find the top five models in terms of highway mileage. Display the results in descending order of highway mileage. Right, so again, it's clear we are going to use the top n function. So MPG group by model, right? So we want the top five models in terms of highway mileage. So we group by model and for each model, we are calculating the average highway mileage, right? Because each model, there are many cars of each model. So when we say top five models in terms of highway mileage, what we really mean is top five models in terms of average highway mileage. So that's why we are doing group by model. Summarize average highway is mean highway. And then after having done that, we take the top five of this column average highway and we arrange it in descending order of average highway mileage and that's what you get. Okay, so you can do these kinds of operations quite easily by simply invoking uh, several uh, of our dplyr functions with a pipeline. Okay, so uh, you can see how dplyr makes these kinds of things very easy for us, right? So we can uh, imagine any kind of analysis we, analysis we would like to do on a data set. It might be pretty complicated in terms of all kinds of summarizing and grouping and so on, but that's the problem for dplyr to solve, not for us. All we have to do is to simply state what we want. And once we correctly state what we want, out is going to come the result. Okay, so now I'm saying use the MPG data set, find the top five models in terms of highway mileage, produce a bar plot. So it's exactly like, like before, we do this and simply pipe the result to ggplot, right? ggplot, AES model average highway, geom bar stat equals identity. Why are we saying stat equals identity? That is because our calculation of top n has already given us the model name as well as the highway mileage, right? Normally, bar plot calculates the value that is number of times the, each of those values occurs. This time we have everything. All we want the bar plot to do is to just do the plotting. So we say stat equals identity and it gives us this result, okay? So for every model, you see how many cars are there uh, for, uh, I mean, we see the average highway mileage for each of the cars. Okay, this is not very satisfactory, 
right? When you look at a bar plot like this, you would like it to be ordered by the height of the bar. Okay. Currently, by default, it has been ordered by the names of the models, right? Notice the model names are in ascending order, right? So that is how bar plot works. By default, it orders the bars by the uh, by the value of whatever it is that you're using to do the bar plot by the x-axis, basically. Okay. So in order to get the bars in ascending order, we somehow have to change the the way ggplot is treating all of these model names. We'll show you in the next slide what to do to get that. Okay. Now what we are going to do is we are saying mutate model, right? So right now it is treating the model as a character column and it's just ordering it by the value of the character column. So Ultima comes first because it starts with an A. But what we are telling it now is change the order column into a factor. So the reorder function says make this model column from a character column into a factor column and give the factor values based on the average highway mileage. Okay, base the factor values on the average highway mileage. So the one with the lowest highway mileage will come first and one with the highest mileage will come last. Okay, so then when it does the plotting, it's going to uh, plot the bars in order. Now we are plotting it, you know, piping it on to ggplot just like before. And now you notice that the mileage, uh, the, the bars are now ordered properly. It just so happens that Ultima still comes first, but that's just a coincidence. You can notice that the other bars are all ordered by height. Okay, This is something that you frequently have to do when you do bar plots. Because bar plots in which the bars are not ordered are not useful. They are not very pleasing. So many times when you create bar plots, uh, you will have to do the ordering yourself by using the mutate function and then reordering it based on what the whatever is it that represents the height of the bar. Incidentally, just going back to the previous slide for a second. So in the previous slide, we do have an arrange by descending order of average highway miles, right? But that didn't have any impact on the bars because ggplot is ordering the bars based on the names of the values on the x-axis or by the factor levels of the variable on the x-axis. This arrange is not going to play any role at all. Right? So we may think that we said a range and therefore the bars should be in the correct order, but a range actually played no role in this. Okay? So that is why in the second plot, we actually removed a range because we see that a range does not play any role. So a range has actually been removed. Okay? So this is something to take care of that when you're doing a, a series of piped operations and piping the results into ggplot and especially when you create a bar plot, if you want the bars to be in proper order, then a range is not going to cut it for you. Instead, you have to mutate it appropriately and create a factor with the correct factor levels. Okay, now grouping by multiple variables, this we've already seen. So daily is this grouping by multiple values. Okay, year, month, day, and this is our daily thing which is grouped by something. And of course, there are 365 groups. Okay. And now you can find uh, the per day flights by saying per day is summarized daily flights equals n. You remember n tells you how many rows there are. So for each level of this grouping, in other words, for each day, it's going to find out how many flights there are and produce the results. Okay. And uh, per day, of course, is a variable to which we are assigning this. Okay. Now what you'll see is that summarize has unwound one level of grouping and per day is now a group by year and month alone, right? That's because there's only one row per day. So that has got uh, unbound, okay? So now again, we can say summarize per day flights equals some flights, okay? Uh, how many flights there were for that particular day, right? So we found how many flights there were for, uh, the, for each day. Uh, now we are doing uh, for summarizing per day and doing the sum flights. So now what happens is it gets unwound by one more level and we now have it grouped by year. Okay, so this is of course summarizing and calculating how many flights there are per month. Okay, and then of course we can do this once again and you will get the overall thing. Summarize per month 
flights equals sum of flights. Okay, so this is monthly flights getting added up and uh, getting it per year. Okay, and therefore you see that the final result is not grouped anymore because there is only one year in our data set and we have unwound it thrice, right? We said first by, uh, by day, that unwound one level and then we did per month, that unwound another level and then when we did per year, that unwound the final level of grouping and this result is of course just for the total data frame. There are no more groups in this. So as we said, summarize has unwound all the groupings. Sometimes we may want to ungroup manually. Right? We already see that the process of summarization automatically ungroups one level, but sometimes we may want to ungroup uh, uh, manually. Okay, So for example, you've got daily, which is this, it's got all these groups. Okay, And if you just did daily ungroup, okay, so that is no more grouped. And then you do summarize flights equals n all flights, you get back just one row. Right? So you took daily, which was grouped by three levels, year, month, and day. You ungrouped it, so there is no longer any grouping. So the result is basically the original data frame or, or table. And then you summarize it and count the number of flights. You see that you get only one. Okay. Of course, you, this is not something you would want to do. I am writing this code only to demonstrate how ungrouping works.